Okay, I have been using iPadOS 26 for the last month or so. I have used this update on my 13 inch M1 iPad Pro and on my A17 Pro iPad mini. And this is by far the best update Apple has ever released for their iPad devices. This update transformed my iPad mini and now I feel like this device is even more productive at doing productivity things than it was previously. And I also feel like for the 13 inch iPad Pro, it really allows that device to become an actual possible Mac replacement. On my last iPad mini video regarding iPadOS 26, I called this the Baby Mac, which a lot of you guys loved. Is this device still the Baby Mac? And is the 13 inch iPad Pro now finally worth buying? Let's talk about it. Now the cool thing about this update is that I am very surprised that it runs so well on my devices. Like I said, I have the A17 Pro, which is obviously a great chip. It has eight gigs of RAM and it supports Apple intelligence, but typically with a massive overhaul like this, you would expect pretty bad performance and the performance wasn't very good with the first two betas, but it is really, really good. I think it's good enough to where it's now considered ready for prime time. And that to me is very exciting for all of the newcomers that will come with the public beta. So Apple sure knows what they're doing there. So let's start with the lock screen. You have this new beautiful lock screen that allows you to customize your clock and your wallpapers more differently in a way that is just a little bit more unique, a little bit more customization than what we were using previously. So you can go in here and you can enlarge your clock widget along with bringing more depth into your wallpaper, which is something I am very much a fan of. And I just love this look on the iPad, especially on the iPad mini, having that larger clock is absolutely gorgeous on the lock screen. And of course you get the beautiful customization adjustments with the icons. So you can now make all of your icons and widgets transparent, which looks really cool. And then you can also use the new tinted option, which makes the icons look tinted to a specific color which I think looks beautiful on iPad OS 26. So let's start with the iPad mini. The iPad mini is what I typically use whenever I am using an iPad. I just prefer its size, its capability with the fast processor. I prefer that this iPad is a lot more budget friendly than the other iPads. I really enjoy using an iPad mini and this particular update for the last month or so has vastly improved my productivity with this device. Now we'll say on iPad OS 26, one of the issues I have with the iPad mini is that you still only get a duplication mode whenever you plug in your iPad with an external display. Typically speaking, I would much rather have a display extended mode as opposed to the duplication mode, like a second desktop or a extended, like an extra screen with your iPad mini. But yeah, you can literally use this device as a computer now. And that comes from all of the new multitasking features. So when Apple first introduced Stage Manager, the iPad mini wasn't on the list for getting those features and they brought stage manager over to the iPad mini and then they brought over the new windows apps display mode. Now the windowed apps display mode is definitely my favorite when you compare it to stage manager. Stage manager is cool and all, but that was the original multitasking way Apple introduced multitasking to the iPads and the windowed apps mode is by far more superior. So I am able to open what feels like an infinite amount of applications. I'm able to swipe them from one side to the other in order to get a split screen mode. You also have the new swipe down feature that allows you to access all the menu settings, the file options, the view options, the arrange options. I can go in and either arrange the application exactly where I want on my screen. I can minimize it. I can close it. I can expand it. I can shrink it. I can do whatever I want with the new multitasking features. And a lot of people are saying like, hey, you have an iPad mini. Why do you need to do all of that? And it's not about why I need to do that. It's more so the fact that Apple is finally adding new features to the iPad mini that they also brought over to their newer, more premium iPad Pros and iPad Airs. Now, the cool thing about these new multitasking features is that you can also do this on the A16 base model iPad as well. So as long as your iPad can download and run iPadOS 26, you will have access to these new features. It's not limited anymore like it used to be previously. So the iPad mini 6, like the old 2021 iPad Pros, 
Heck, I bet even the 2018 iPad Pro can run iPad OS 26, and you can still get access to all those new multitasking features. That to me is a game changer. No longer do you have to buy the latest or the most expensive iPads in order to access these features. Now, obviously all the iPads that support Apple intelligence have at least eight gigs of RAM, which honestly is probably the minimum in terms of using these features. But we'll just have to see what that looks like in the fall when the actual release of iPadOS 26 comes out. A couple of other things I noticed, they redid the files application. So you should be able to go in and categorize your folders like a Mac. You should be able to rename the folders with emojis and change the colors of the folders themselves. You should be able to drag and drop files from like the Photos app into your Files app and vice versa. Or say you're working on a spreadsheet and you want to drag over a file that is inside of your Files app, you can drag that directly into your Word, Excel, or whatever document you're working on. The new Files app should allow a lot more usability than what it did previously. Now, one thing about the multitasking, the iPad, of course, does not have every single application tuned to run like an iPad application. So one thing that is extremely useful for the applications like Instagram and Instagram threads, those applications do not support iPad sized applications. So what I typically do is leave those shrinked down and to where it's shaped more like a phone app. So whenever you are using those applications and multitasking with other applications, that particular application doesn't look bad because it's not optimized for iPadOS. I really love that feature with the new multitasking. Now, a lot of people are complaining that the slide over feature is gone. Yes, they did remove the slide over multitasking feature, but you really don't need it anymore. You can go in and minimize and add and resize applications to where you really don't need to slide it over anymore. If you have the application in your dock, just click the application and it pops back into your view. No big deal. But I know a lot of people have been talking about that. And maybe that's something that they plan to bring in the future. But as of right now, I'm okay with slide over being gone. We obviously want as many features as possible, but with that being gone, you can probably get used to the new way of multitasking with no issues. And I noticed whenever you connect an external mouse, the mouse cursor is now shaped more like an actual mouse cursor. And like I said, whenever I use this Moth Dynamic Folio, connect a keyboard to it, connect a mouse to it, or whenever I use it just lounging around, this origami style accessory is a game changer. So I can mount the iPad app in what they call the floating theater mode, connect those accessories to it, and it just elevates the screen enough for me to where I can use it without any issues. Or say I'm working on a new project and I go in and choose the dual screen mode, I can have my phone attached to the case magnetically while I am using the full canvas of my iPad screen for the drawing, while presenting a video or a photo for me to watch and view while I am drawing or say I'm done with all the business stuff for today and I wanna sit on the couch and use what I call it the couch leg mode. And I can actually use this case to mount to my knee while I'm watching YouTube videos or multitasking, coloring with my pen, whatever. I love that mode. So yeah, thanks Moth for sending this out for me to look at. This isn't a sponsorship, but I really love this product. I'll leave a link down below for you guys to check it out. This update is not perfect. You still can't run Mac OS type of applications on your iPads. So for example, I use CapCut to edit all of my videos. And the CapCut mobile application is a lot harder to use on my iPad than it is on my Mac. So I would much prefer to use the desktop version of CapCut that's on my Mac versus on my iPad Pro. And they brought background activities to where like, for example, they showed where they were using a video editing software and that particular software would export the video in the background. But it sounds like that particular feature is set on a case by case basis and not every single application will support such background activity. And maybe that's just because we're on a beta, but it sounds like that particular feature is going to be somewhat limited as well. And I'm going to bring it up again for the iPad mini. I still can't use the extension display mode whenever I connect an external monitor to it. Now, I don't know if that's particularly an issue with the chip not being able to support it, but I feel like all iPads at this point, especially ones that released within the last couple of years, should be able to extend fully on a external display. But yeah, overall, iPadOS 26 is a major step in the right direction. 
for our iPads. I thoroughly enjoy the multitasking features. I love the new Files app. I love the way the operating system looks overall with liquid glass. And I feel like Apple will never ever make these iPads as good as the Mac OS devices. If they did that, it would severely limit the sales of the Mac laptops. So when you think of it in terms of a business decision, you want your consumers to order as many devices as possible. You want suckers like me who will buy an iPad mini, invest in a Mac, maybe even a MacBook Pro, MacBook Air, and an iPhone. So honestly, it's not surprising that this update is not perfect in terms of being a Mac OS replacement, but it is very, very close. And I think for the majority of people, whenever they download this update and they get used to it and they get used to using their particular workflows with this update, it will be a game changer for a lot of people. But I wonder how many people will actually, like honestly, actually take the time to learn how to use iPadOS's multitasking features and the new file system enhancements. How many people will actually sit down and take the time to learn that? I'm not sure, but I think it's awesome that we have the ability to do that on all of these iPad devices. So Apple, keep doing what you're doing. Let me know what iPad you have. Let me know if you have used the iPadOS 26 beta yet, and let me know if you plan to download it here soon. But if you enjoyed this video, go ahead and like and subscribe, and I will see you all in the next one. I hope that was really good.